I'm sure there are plenty of fanboys that defend the brand split. They love it. It's a more opportunity for more wrestlers. If I don't like this show, I can watch this show and like these guys. All of these different justifications that can be used. They can run multiple events the same night between the different brands. They don't all have to be in one area. They can do more pay-per-views, which means more reasons to generate potential traffic to the WWE Network. It means more opportunities to sell more merch because you put more people on TV. You have more titles so you can sell those. All of these other things. It sounds great in theory, except it's time to end this stupid-ass brand split. There was a reason this company went away from it a few years back. And I never really fully got the justification for why they felt the need to go back to it, other than some of the reasons that I just provided, which sound great in theory, but are not necessarily particularly applicable to the WWE as we know them now and have known them for several years. Number one, this whole thing about giving more people more opportunities, bullshit! They still can only manage to book somewhat effectively for a couple of people on each roster. You're just fucking circle jerking and fiddle fucking around with two thirds to three quarters of the rest of the damn roster anyways. Whether they're on TV or not, they're not going to get over and you're not going to let them get over and you're not going to do things to help them get over. So why the hell do they need that television time any damn ways? And then thinking about it, You've got to sit there and create three hours of television here and two hours of television there. You've got to do an entirely different show with entirely different people here, an entirely different show with entirely different people here, having different creative teams and all this other bullshit. And ding dong, dumb dicks, it's not working. I repeat, blah, blah, blah. it's not working. It's not working. And then you get the crap where... It feels like everybody's a freaking champion. It's like it's field day in fourth grade and everybody gets a participation ribbon even though your ass got smoked by eight minutes in the fucking mile. That's what this crap feels like. He's a world champ. He's a world champ. She's the women's champ. Oh, she's a women's champ. They're all tag champions. They're all big card champions. And it's all a bunch of bullshit. You got too many damn champions. Nobody stands out. It's just freaking ridiculous. And then when you get to the part where you're talking about getting rid of the brand exclusive pay-per-views, if you're getting rid of the brand exclusive pay-per-views, then why in the hell do you still have the brand split? The real truth of the matter is, this roster is not that good. The creative powers that be for this company are even worse. The last thing you should be trying to do is create two entirely different types of shows with two entirely different rosters because you can't get any of that shit right. And from a business justification, the demands of running these increased amounts of live events and pay-per-views just aren't there. Because you're drawing some boo-boo-ass live attendance numbers, specifically with the SmackDown shows, which has always kind of been a bit of a problem. For the B-Blue brand, you just... At what point in time in the search for new streams of revenue does it not become cost effective or really worth it from a financial bang for your buck standpoint to run everybody so fucking ragged and stretch yourself so damn thin? And it's not creating a bunch of new stars. It's not giving a bunch of people new opportunities. And how stupid is it going to look? having split shows still with Raw and SmackDown, and now you're talking about combining all the pay-per-views into one, and oh yeah, all of them being at least four hours again. I hate WWE. Fuck you for that. Now you're going to sit there and have at least half of this damn show isn't even worried about the pay-per-view, so the company ultimately is not going to give a crap. Not like they give a huge amount of crap with the people actually booked on the pay-per-view. Now you're trying to sit there and shoehorn in these guys from this other damn pay-per-view, and half of them, when they have an hour less of TV time, thank God, don't get any ideas for a third hour of SmackDown. Kiss my ass! So these guys with an hour less, you're still going to have a whole set of roster over there that's never going to get a chance, never going to get a chance to get featured, never going to get on the damn pay-per-view. It's just so dumb. This desire to want to stretch themselves out and find new ways to create revenue, to sit there and do this and do that. And for all these freaking sheep that are sitting there talking about how booming WWE's business is, 
bullshit. They wouldn't be talking about going back to doing dual-branded pay-per-views if business was so banging. This is where idiots that don't understand basic economic principles, and in particular how the stock market works, try to sit there and use those flawed numbers and metrics as a justification for what WWE does. You cannot tell me the WWE has done so many things to sit there and massively, significantly increase their overall bottom line and profits in such a short time frame to see a doubling to tripling in their stock value and overall company valuation over the past two to three years. Give me a damn break. The market is overinflated. It is a bubble. It will burst. And it's been created out of factors entirely unrelated to anything WWE is doing with their business. You cannot tell me your business is great when your viewership is steady to slightly declining as it continues to be. You cannot tell me your viewership is so great and so awesome or that your business is so great and so awesome where to get your record profits you had to cut millions in expenses including getting rid of so many of the customized stages and the freaking pyros! Like this is such horse shit! The brand split and doing dumb things like the brand split potentially creates an environment where this company instead of doing pyros pays Bell Singler a million and a half Bucks a year to freaking job! The stupid! Like, you already don't have reason, frankly, to watch both of these shows each week. I don't know what the hell anybody would want to do that for any damn ways. And it's not like the pay-per-views, like, there are plenty of people that only watch Raw, and you have some people that only watch SmackDown, vice versa, whatever the fuck. But what happens is, is you get an environment where people only watch the Raw exclusive pay-per-views or they only watch the SmackDown exclusive pay-per-views, at least at this particular point, if you got rid of that damn brand split and you got rid of all these split branded pay-per-views like it sounds like you're going to do and you bring them together as dual branded pay-per-views, then at least if you care about the Raw people but not the SmackDown people, you will still be watching every pay-per-view to a certain degree and maybe that's a chance to win over the SmackDown people to Raw, the Raw people to SmackDown or whatever the hell is going to happen. Who knows? But the brand split... Sounds great in theory. In practice, with this idiotic corporation, not so much. And it's just a bad look when you sit there and you do so many of these events. You oversaturate your marketplace. There's too much of a good thing. And when you're performing in arenas where you have to basically move everybody over to opposite the camera side to make it look full and the camera side is almost all the way empty and that happens quite a bit with Raw and a lot on SmackDown that's not good that means you have problems and to sit there and stretch yourself so thin in the search of a small amount of additional revenue is really counterproductive you don't get the bang for the buck that you deserve and it helps you take the buy off the ball of other important things and fundamentally ultimately people if you're not going to have split-branded, brand-exclusive pay-per-views, then why would you have split-branded shows? For what? For what the fuck? And at this point in time, it's not like a lot of you like SmackDown anyways. It's the shits. Road Dogs running it into the ground. Like, yeah, I had to know he eventually was going to. And Raw sucks because Raw sucks. Because it's three hours of suck, basically. So at least we could sit there and say, if you took... Raw and SmackDown, and combine the rosters, at least you would have a chance of saying, hey, we'll have more of the best of the best, we'll have less to book for in terms of the number of angles, we'll just have to book more for them from Monday night to Tuesday night, and that means the programs might have a shorter shelf life. Well, fuck a lot of them do any goddamn ways. And they're already doing a lot of shit where they do the match before the pay-per-view, then sometimes at the pay-per-view, and most certainly you're going to get the return match right after the pay-per-view the next damn night. So what the hell do you need the brand exclusive pay-per-views for? And when you really look at this roster, we could do with a whole hell of a lot less in terms of talent. Now maybe you could sit there and you take all the women and put them on Raw. You put all the cruiserweights on Tuesday night. That's okay. If that's what you want to do, Fine, fuck it, do it. But doing this entirely different show on Raw, entirely different show on SmackDown, it sounds great in theory, it just sucks. I hate that the WWE went back down this road again, that they ultimately went away from for a reason, thinking that it was going to be any different this time. Well, ding dong, dumb dicks, it's not. It's time to end the brand split, it's stupid.